Yo, what's going on guys? It's Lee Van Dam here and it's uh, it's been a while. It's been a while for Tekken, uh, well recording Tekken. I've been playing and uh, getting ready for final round. So I uh, hope everybody's been doing well. I've been doing, uh, doing well myself, been very busy, but busy is good and uh, I appreciate you hanging on for me. Uh, I know it's been a long time. Um, I wanted to talk about why I play Lee because I've been playing Lee for a very long time and Lee is a character where in the grand scheme of things um, he is not rewarded for his execution so his execution has to be super spot on all the time in order for him to really fully fully benefit from what the character can offer and so that can be very daunting when you're in a tournament because you have a lot of characters with very strong gimmicks and Lee has the tools to punish almost everything. He just may have an execution barrier in order to get max damage and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Um, he's a character that is uh, very simple on paper and uh, he gets more rewarding the more you know about the game. And so, me um, once said that Lee is a character that you play if you want to lose in a stylish fashion. <laughs> and he's not wrong because it takes a lot of tech and knowledge to be able to function with Lee well because Lee matches either go one of two ways. They go one of two ways. Uh, the first way is that your opponent does not know what Lee can do, so you get away with a lot of stuff. And so you can win that way. The second way is that you know what your opponent's character is capable, capable of. And so if you know the punishes and you're able to draw the match out, get the life lead, make them come to you, make them have to really establish a mix up and you have great defense, then Lee is a monster. Lee is a monster if you have good defense and if you have good knowledge of Tekken because he capitalizes on punishment extremely well, both block punishment and whiff punishment. He also has great poking and he can be extremely annoying. So say for example, down 4-1. Down 4-1 is extremely annoying. Uh, you know, it goes under, it goes under highs and it goes under mids in some cases as well. And um, you know, it's just something that when you want to close a round out with Lee, you could you could get away with down foot one, down foot one, just just doing that until they get tired. And uh, in some matches, it will win. It's really really a great tool. Um, he also has standing three for keep out. That's plus seven on hit now. So this really establishes that you get to move in. So after this, you can do a lot of stuff. So after this. Down for one is uninter uninterruptible. Um, after this, that becomes extremely fast. Um, it's 22 frames, so after that, it becomes 15. And 15 is really fast unless they're just trying to jab you out of something. And it has a built-in backdash, so it does move Lee's hitbox, which is really good. And that moves plus two on block, by the way. So if you can get them used to ducking, which is what you want with Lee, so that way you can hit them with super solid hit confirms. That's not, I, I was too late on that one. But he has super solid hit confirms that are mid, that you can take advantage of, then you're gonna be in the driver's seat. Because anytime you can get to the point where you're like, and then you you clock them because you see, you see them double over and you clock them, that free damage is something that Lee excels at and it is extremely frustrating. Again, also great at whiff punishing with back 112 just frame. And um, they made the acid rain work a little bit better, but it's not it's not as amazing as they want us want us to think. So he's got uh, he's got good range as far as punishment. He can punish from pretty far away. See? So that's you know, he can he can whip punish. And uh, he's really good at it, so that's very cool. Uh, down three, still evasive, doesn't have tracking, but it still goes under highs. It still goes under some mids um, with Art of Phoenix properties just based on his hitbox. Um, also, 
back four. Back four is great because look at that. You start out here. Look how far away he is when he goes into Hitman. It he he's gone. He literally has gone a character length back when he goes into Hitman. So in the heat of the match, one thing that Lee's very good at is that you'll be doing some pokes and say, so you'll be doing that, and you know, you'll be doing that, and then all of a sudden, then the heated match, you go, wham, and then you're back here. And then they throw the jab. And when they throw the jab and whiff, pop, that's what happens. You, you pop them in the throat, and then that's where your damage comes from. And then you get to do what you want. You get the wall carry, you get the high damage, you can finish it off if you've got the life lead, you could run away if you want to make them come to you because they've been having trouble getting in on Lee. And they've been having trouble just establishing that uh, they can get on him to get out of this keep out, which keep out with, back, with standing three, back four, back in the hit man, and just, just covering a lot of ground, you know. He covers a lot of ground. My favorite move in the entire world, 443, because it hits from 8,000 feet away. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Look at that, it's so good. You just, you just all of a sudden, bah! Look at that. And then you can crouch dash a little bit beforehand and buffer it. Bah, love it. So, you know, Lee definitely is a character where you have to you have to love Tekken for what it is. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. You gotta love Tekken for what it is. Um, so we've gone over that he has um, he has good whiff punishment. He's got good block punishment. I mean, 10 frames. You can't beat it. If you want to keep them on their feet, 10 frames plus seven. Um, if you want to keep them uh, at negative 13, bop bop. That's a lot. That's a lot in negative 13. That's a nice wall splat at like negative 13. So he covers all of the, the the situations where you're like, oh, okay, I did something. It's not launch punishable, but Lee's like, don't worry. I still get 30 plus, sometimes 50. So, you know, he is playing Tekken all the time, all the time. Lee is playing Tekken. He's not playing gimmick. He is playing the game Tekken. So one thing when you went with Lee, you know that you played Tekken. You know you didn't do a whole bunch of crazy stuff. You know you didn't do some ridiculous setup gimmick that was just like, oh my God, that was so crazy. I wouldn't have blocked that to save my life. No, Lee plays Tekken. When you guess the mid-low mix-up, he gets a good reward mid. He gets an okay reward low because his low, his low is gonna be usually the slide. I mean, normally it's going to be the slide. Uh, I mean, he may he, he may have other moves that he can do, you know, that are low, that he can get out of there. But I mean, usually, even out of Hitman, it's going to be slide. So, oh man, just because I got on camera, I've been working on the the Hitman slide too. So, I mean, that's that's mainly that's going to be. That's the low everybody's scared of. So it's, and then you know also that, because Silver Tail is super annoying, and it's only minus 14 on block, and he's so far away. <laughs> he's so far away. So annoying. So I mean he's got he's got some he's got some decent lows. He's got some decent lows that harass you. You know, standing three, standing three. Uh, it looks like almost the same. You know, he's got that. He he's got some stuff. Got down back both kicks and he's got the pirouette punch that they can they can look similar in the heat of battle when somebody's waking up and they just see him spin and they just got a pick mid or low neither one of them are super amazing but on counter hit they both knock down so you can't be too mad at that but yeah well so at least you're playing because you want to look good and you want to play tekken you understand that until you know what other characters are about that the likelihood of you getting gimmicked out is high. It is high. Until you know what's going on with the other character, you can know what to do with lead. But if you don't know what to punish with the other characters to shut down their options so that way you can enforce basic Tekken, you're, prob you're gonna have a problem at high level. And that's okay because Lee is one of those characters that makes you feel really, really good 
when you figure things out. Because when you figure things out, Lee's answers are not complicated. Once you can put together what you need to do in the match, his answers are not complicated which means that in most cases his answers are executable on a regular basis as long as you know what's going on. So, you know, I've loved Lee since forever. I, I started playing him in Tekken Tag 1 because he looked like Future Trunks with that haircut. I've been playing him ever since. You know, Tekken Tag 1, that's when he uh, started to get the overhaul on his move list and things started getting really good. And I remember when the, that's when the mistrap throw came out. And I was like, you know, he has an unblockable. And they're like, you got to do it on one frame. And it was crazy because we spent all day trying to do it at the arcade in college. And, you know, first we were, you'd hit the button repeatedly just to try to buffer it in. And it, it would work sometimes. And then you had to get good at it. And then you started getting good at tapping it on one frame. And, uh, and you know, now I'm pretty good at it. In, in fights, in practice, I can't do it to save my life. But in actual fights the feelings there and you know I'm able to I'm able to knock it out okay alright well maybe in practice I can knock it out too anyways the mistrap throw is still something that you want to keep in your arsenal because every now and then once you've peppered somebody with a bunch of mids and they don't want to duck they don't want to take 4-2-1 they don't want to take the pirouette punch they're tired of ducking into that and being at plus 7 so then they're like oh my gosh what is going to happen now He's going to hit me with this low. He's going to hit me with down 4-1 again just to establish pressure. He's going to hit me with down 4-1 and then try to hit me with this stupid low mid crushing kick. And then, you know, you just mosey on along and you just and you just pop them. And then they're upset. <laughs> then they're upset. <laughs> and then that's when Lee is best because then you just leave. You just leave. You can go apply pressure. But if you have the life lead, you hit somebody with a mistrap throw, just leave. Just vacate the premises. No problem. Just vacate the premises. And let them come back to you after being upset because they blocked that move and they still got hit because that's just what happens. And so, uh, again, Lee's a character where I think more people enjoy will enjoy him than they think. Um, his wall carry is much simpler now because he can he has a four plus four one so he doesn't have to do you know he doesn't have to do stupid uh, silly wall carry anymore he can you know he can get there and he still has that to get around but you know um, he doesn't have to do that all the time so that was one of those cool changes uh, bap, bap. and uh, uh, so you know, his execution as far as juggles, much easier for him to get decent damage with juggles, which is really cool. He still has opportunities where you have to work on, you know, figuring stuff out, like out of 444. And, you know, he's got his misstep, which is great because you can do almost anything out of it. Hitman is more deceptive than what it is because you can do almost anything out of it. And, you know, that power crush is great because he sidestep. I've already done a video on it, but it can duck highs and it can it can get behind people if their move has forward momentum and it can do silly stuff. So, you know, his other power crush is great because it's homing, safe on block, high, and uh, you know, it's got armor, so it's and it tail spins. So he has some really, really fun tools amidst his basic stuff. But you're not going to be using these. These tools are not overpowered. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day and I said, Lee pretty much has moves that are 6 out of 10. Um, in almost any given situation, they're 6 out of 10. They're, they're good enough to get the job done and they do the job pretty well. But you can find somebody in the cast that normally has a better version of a move that, a move that Lee has. Um, but I think him having all moves that are pretty much above average, you can't beat that. I mean, his it, his move set is good. It's good for what it does, and it definitely puts you in a position where if you know what the other, other character can do, you're able to take advantage of it, which is why he has such mockery for his stances. That's why he's telling people, because he's, like, he's, he's pretty much like Batman. 
So in the grand scheme of things, he's like Batman. He's like, you know, if I know what's going on, you're through. The first fight that you have with me, well, I might not know, I might not know what's going on, so then that one can be rough. But once I've gone into the Batcave, once I've been able to download the dossier, once I've been able to look at it and go, all right, this is what's going on, it, it, it changes. And that, that changes with Lee. So, you know, it's really fun to watch a lot of other Lees play. And it's really great when you see Lee win. Um, like, I'm your father, Fighting GM, Jody. Uh, I watched a couple of matches with Kiki Deliver. Uh, Bravo was always entertaining when he played Lee. Uh, and uh, we had a fun time when we had to do, got to do mirror matches. Um, even way back in Tekken 5 when, like, Lil Majin was playing Lee. Just, just because. Um, but that's the reason I play him. I play him because I enjoy the character. And to be honest with you, his tools are good enough to get the job done. They're not great in most cases. And that's fine. Because he doesn't have a lot of tools that are outright bad. And that's one of the things that you've got to be happy with. If your character has tools where you can't go, oh, you know what? That's really bad. I can't really say that with Lee. He doesn't have things that are bad. So, you know, that's that's my uh, just my thought bubble on Lee. I wanted to talk about why I play him, and I want to talk about other things. And I'll be I'm going to do a couple of videos on uh, like Hitman stance. I'm going to do one on misstep. And uh, if you have any other ideas, let me know because I want since you have the punishment tutorial in the game that's not as necessary even though I think I'm gonna come back to that because some of it's not accurate um, I want to go over some things about the Lee Chowland mindset because to be honest um, myself uh, GM Jody we all play him differently but I don't think Lee changes that much um, he takes time he takes character knowledge you have to know what's going on with everybody else in order to excel or they have to know nothing about Lee and then you can just get away with murder um, more so than the other characters because Lee's moves are pretty simple they're pretty effective and if you don't know what's going on things going into misstep look like they have advantage when they don't things look like they're safe when they're not hit confirms are crazy and the, his delays on strings man his delays on strings will get you on up out of there if you don't know what's going on you're not going to see the string until the last game. It's going to get you on up out of there. And you're going to get launched at the wrong time, not know it was there, and that's it. So that's my rant on Lee. I just wanted to talk about why um, I really enjoy playing him because, uh, you know, he is a lot of fun, and I enjoy him. And, uh, you know, let me know if you're playing Lee, why you play him, what brought you to the Silver-Haired Demon. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate you just hanging out with me. I know it's been a long time, but I'm really looking forward to getting back into things. If you like this video and, um, you know, I want to do more just on deep diving into this man, throw me a like. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do it. I'm looking to do this on Thursdays. So, you know, that's going to be the day that I'm dedicating it to it now that my schedule's opened up. And again, I appreciate you so much. And until next time, this is Lee Van Dam. You guys take care. God bless. I'll see you later.